Jill Stein is shedding light on a really important political issue that isn't getting much play in the mainstream media and just isn't being discussed around the country generally speaking. So there are plans to construct an oil pipeline that will go from the Bakken region of North Dakota to southern Illinois. And this is dangerous because it threatens the drinking water of millions of Americans and it also violates U.S. treaties and the sovereignty of a tribe known as Standing Rock. And this would transport 470,000 barrels of crude oil per day. And this would go over the Missouri River, which is less than a mile from the tribe's territory. So in an op-ed for the New York Times, one of the tribal members explains the nearly 1,200 mile pipeline owned by a Texas oil company named Energy Transfer Partners would snake across our treaty lands and through our ancestral burial grounds just a half mile from our reservation boundary. The proposed route crosses the Missouri River, which provides drinking water for millions of Americans and irrigation water for thousands of acres of farming and ranching lands. The Dakota Access Pipeline was fast-tracked from day one using the Nationwide Permit Number 12 process, which grants exemption from environmental reviews required by the Clean Water Act and the National Environmental Policy Act by treating the pipeline as a series of small construction sites. And unlike the better-known Keystone XL project, which was finally canceled by the Obama administration last year, the Dakota Access Project does not cross an international border. The condition that mandated the more rigorous federal assessment of the Keystone Pipeline's economic justification and environmental impacts. Now, in plans to construct this pipeline, the company that was going to do it, they're supposed to consult the tribe before going through with any of these projects, but they claimed that there were no meaningful attempts to consult with them about constructing this pipeline. So as a result, people are rightfully outraged. So members of the tribe, along with thousands of other peaceful protesters, have been fighting and protesting to halt this pipeline. Now, of course, they are using nonviolent tactics, but can you guess what's happening? They are being harassed, intimidated, and arrested by police officers who are falsely claiming that they're getting violent. This is a typical go-to tactic. I mean, we saw it at the DNC event in Nevada when they claimed that Bernie Sanders supporters were throwing chairs. Well, they're kind of using that similar tactic here. They're claiming that they're being violent when they're being peaceful and they're using that as a uh, justification to arrest them under these false accusations. It's just completely ridiculous. So thankfully, Jill Stein and Ajamu Baraka have come to the defense of Standing Rock and the people who don't want this pipeline constructed. And they are saying, we salute the courageous people of the Standing Rock Reservation and their allies who are standing up to protect their land and our future on Earth from the poisonous fossil fuel industry and an economy that puts corporate profits over people and planet. The time is now to stop the destruction of our planet for short-term profits. Extreme weather exacerbated by climate change shows why we need to immediately say no to fossil fuel fuel expansion and say yes to wind, water, and solar. Transitioning to 100% clean renewable energy as our Green New Deal program will do is the path to ending unemployment, halting the climate meltdown, and building a healthier society. It provides a just transition that respects the lives, lands, and livelihoods of Native American communities. It's also the only way forward to a future in which we can survive and thrive. Now, the battle for this has been taken to court, so we won't find out what the court decides until the beginning of September. But until then, I think we need to do everything to make as much noise about this as possible. Because... This is not okay. This cannot be constructed for environmental reasons and for moral reasons and for issues like this where only a few thousand people are really speaking out. Well, politicians often don't bother uh, doing anything for them because, you know, that's not going, going to get them much more voters. But Jill Stein here is taking a strong moral stance and is saying, no, I don't care how small the crowd of people are. We have to make sure that their rights are not violated. We all have a right to a planet that is habitable to clean drinking water and all that this will do is facilitate the destruction of our planet it's not okay now if you would like to help the people of standing rock you can donate to them and see the link in the description box to do so much like the keystone xl pipeline if we put up a big enough fight then they'll be compelled to stop. So these oil companies cannot continue to take advantage of us, so we have to fight this tooth and nail. They don't get to just pollute the planet and poison our drinking water because they want to make a buck or two. I don't think so. So we've got to fight this.